Hello, you guys. So, first, let me say I was already getting ready for bed. <laughs> um, so I just washed my hair. That's why my hair looks crazy. And I actually had a very bad case of cold sores again. Those of you guys who follow my channel, you've seen me a million times with cold sores. I get cold sores a lot. But I had a very bad breakup and I have medicine on my lips because of it. So if you guys are wondering why I'm sitting here with weird colored lips before the comments start. <laughs> we know it's YouTube and you know how people love to just say mean-spirited things just for the sake of being mean-spirited. So anyway, I just finished watching an episode of Trigonometry. I'm guessing most people who follow my channel or watch my videos, they know what trigonometry is. It is one of the many podcasts that I enjoy watching and following. And they interviewed interviewed um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Or Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, I don't know. Does anybody not know who he is? He's a very famous astrophysicist. Um, he's been on like shows like The Big Bang Theory and stuff. He was actually always a very well liked person. Um, he was always a little bit kooky. Like I always remember him in like all of the shows and documentaries he's been in that I've watched. Like he'd always wear like really funky ties and weird shirts, and he'd always have like a really nice goofy laugh and didn't seem like somebody who took himself too seriously. And I. I'm definitely not somebody, my field is not astrophysics, that's not my background, um, as you guys know that who follow my channel, I studied statistics or math in my bachelor and economics in my master, so that's where my expertise in terms of least academics um, lie, so I just took it as truth that he is a highly intelligent person, dare say he's one of the intellectuals of our time, especially in the field of astrophysics. Again, this is not my le an area of expertise, so I wasn't I wouldn't have been able to watch any of his documentaries or any shows he's been on and refute him on any of these things because it's not it's not, not where my expertise lies. So, I would say he's somebody that I he's not he's never been like one of my top 5 people that I looked up to or I was like oh my god what an amazing human being and I wish I want to be just like him but I would say I had a healthy amount of respect for the guy just for his achievements and for his expertise and stuff and he always seemed very rational and level-headed to me well this interview just completely destroyed my picture of this man now, having said that, a couple of months ago already, I saw some people already posting that he went on Twitter or whatever social media app, and he made some really ridiculous argumentation um, in benefit of the trans issue. I don't know what like would be a political correct way to say that, and just kind of saying that, you know... Some days I wake up and I might feel 80% woman. So, you know, I'll put on some makeup and I'll shave my beard. And, and that's just what it is. And gender is completely fluid. And just like a lot of silly nonsense that I wouldn't have expected from somebody with his intellectual prowess. <clears throat> but at the time, like, I watched it and I was like, whatever. Like, I'm not that invested in him to where I'm going to, like, really care. But now I do watch the trigonometry channel and uh, I have to honestly say it's for any of those of you guys out here that who are friends of him I found him so unlikable in this interview first of all his demeanor to me was completely off-putting I think he was being excessively rude I think he was being excessively condescending to the hosts I mean he constantly made comments like Okay, let me explain this in a different way because most of the people, they don't understand me. They don't know anything. They're not smart enough. <laughs> I was just kind of like, you know, the topics you guys are talking about right now are not that difficult, right? If you were talking about astrophysics, yes, you probably would have to dumb it down for most of us, including me. 
But we're we were the topics were like the trans issue. They talked a little bit about Corona and stuff. Like these are things that the average person can, for the most part, very well understand. You don't have to talk down on us. He kept making all these comments about like because obviously the host they're in England and he kept making all these comments very like well you know England you know you colonialists you know you you've been everywhere and you've you've subjugated people everywhere so you guys should know all this kind of stuff and I'm like okay first of all. The two hosts, uh, the one guy is Russian. I know for a fact that he's a first-generation English citizen. And the other one, if I remember correctly, like, his parents are Venezuelan. He was born in Britain, but his, like, parents are Venezuelan. So I was kind of like, okay, most of these guys have nothing even to do historically with colonization. So these petty remarks he kept making were such, were such a turnoff for me. And, like... And then he kept every every topic they talked about, somehow he brought in about like, well, you know how white people oppress black people and you know how oppressed bl black people are in the world. And my, my father fought for the civil rights because was black people were oppressed. And I'm like, okay, yes, these are historical truths, but that's not even what we're talking about at all. Like, could you please stop making it about, about this, th about what you're bringing about? Like, it's not about, we're not talking about civil rights right now. We're talking about the civil rights movement right now. We're talking about, like, women's issues and women's rights and all this kind of stuff. Um, but the main thing, besides the fact that I thought his demeanor was absolutely such a turnoff and really made me go, like, wow, I can't believe... I always thought that he seemed like such a nice, goofy, gentle giant kind of person. And I actually thought he was incredibly rude and just not willing to listen to anybody else. And he was aggressive in his, in his argumentation. Th there was one thing that I don't... I just want to, from a mathematical standpoint, I want to talk about. Because when he said it, I... <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. It's like, look, I'm not saying that I'm the smartest person in the room. There's a lot of people... Especially a lot of these, you know, people I watch where I'm in awe of their intellect. I'm in awe of, how, like, how quick th thoughted they are and the ways that thoughted. That's not even a word. Quick thinking they are. Um, and even in my daily life, I, have, I, I would say in general, I surround myself with people that I think are, at the minimum, my intellectual equals, if not more. Because I'm somebody who is very much intellectually driven in life i think i find it very sexy i find it very interesting when people are well read and well versed and they've traveled and they've and they've gone through a lot of schooling and they have a lot to say and they're just intellect they have a high intellectual prowess i just find that very for me probably the most attractive thing about a person male or female and <laughs> having said that again in astrophysics i'm sure this man I mean, I don't know anything, so of course he's going to make me look completely ridiculous. But there is this one part in the interview, I think it was like an hour in or something like that, where he, he actually said, because like the question was something about, you know, does he feel that we're living in a time where just everything is changing too rapidly, technology is changing too rapidly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he, and he literally was like, oh, finally I have a chance to bring in some math or like talk about math again i felt like he was saying that in a way to be a little bit condescending to the audience kind of to make it seem like you know your audience is generally so stupid i, I didn't feel comfortable to bring in math because who understands math which fair enough most people don't <laughs> but anyway that he said this really this just completely mathematically incorrect statement where i was just kind of like wait a minute you're an astrophysicist and you completely just said something completely incorrect mathematically so he was saying how human existence and the term and and how change i don't know where he got these demographics from so i'm just going to go with it and but he said something like we the human experience is on an exponential like growth pattern so an exponential line i don't know how many maybe a lot of you guys aren't math people either but exponential growth pattern is basically if you plot it it's a curve that goes like this and then really rapidly starts shooting straight up. So it's kind of like, you know, in the very beginning, you don't see a lot of growth. You don't see a lot of growth. The curve goes really slow. The curve goes really slow. And then all of a sudden it just like shoots up, shoots off into whatever, you know, whatever the limit is. And, <laughs> 
And then he made, I, I, he literally used this, this argument about the exponential curve. And then he was kind of like, yeah, because humanity lives on this exponential curve experience, you know, I think it's, it's already shows how people don't understand anything because they're always saying things are changing so fast. Things are moving too quickly nowadays. We can't adapt. We can't adapt. And he's like, but I would go back to the seventies and you know, the, the, we were already on the exponential growth curve then and you know like for the 70s things were going really fast and that's why you know because we are on this exponential curve every decade is just crazy and everything is too fast and I was like and I literally was like what the hell are you talking about that is not the way an exponential curve works the whole point of an exponential curve is that you have exponential growth. And with exponential growth, the growth rate accelerates depending on where you are on the curve. Like, that's such a stupid thing to say. <laughs> like, that's the exact opposite of what an exponential curve means. It means that once you reach a certain point in the exponential curve, you actually see growth accelerated way quicker than you did at the beginning so no you, like that argument that you that there was exponential growth you know in the 70s and before that that already made it seem like things are going way too fast all of a sudden versus now that is oh god i just i literally was just kind of like wait a minute <laughs> this man is an astrophysicist and he doesn't even understand what how an exponential curve works <laughs> Uh, I was, I literally had, like, in German, we call it um, Fremdschämen as a word. I think in English, you translate it to secondary embarrassment. Is that, a, is that a term? I was like, that is literally how I felt. I was like, I, oh, my God, I actually have secondary embarrassment for this man. Like, the way he just explained this is mathematically completely incorrect. So that was just one thing that I already, in the video, I kind of was like... <sighs> I already lost so much respect for you that you, I mean, like to be an astrophysicist, the level of math that he must have already been able to do to where he cannot explain which in the world of mathematics is actually relatively simple, complex, uh, simple, um, simple, complex so this is the word I'm looking for. Obviously, I'm a math person and not an, an English major because I can't even pronounce words correctly or string sentences together in the correct way. It's, oh, complex, 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 is that an English word? It's not a very complex, complex, it's not a very complex mathematical concept <laughs> to where he should have gotten that so wrong. So that to me already was like, okay. Anyway, and then he went back into the trans, they kind of pushed him a little bit on his opinions of trans and he was just making, he, <sighs> Like, the, his arguments he was making about, like, because they asked him about, you know, trans women in sports and it not being equal, fair. And he was kind of like, yeah, well, then we just have to think of more ways to make it fair. You know, it's also not fair when, you know, somebody who is two feet tall goes up against, you know, somebody who's one foot t tall in wrestling, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. It's not fair. I mean, like, I'm not even a sports person. And I know that they have certain, in certain sports, they have weight categories you know, they have they have cutoffs on age. You can't be in the same age. Like, it, there are categories like this in sports that exist. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Like, exactly. We, the whole point of saying that we don't want trans women to be in women's sports is because we're trying to say we understand that there's no way to create a 100% equity in sports. It's not possible. Right. There's always going to be a certain variation within the people competing, men or women, in terms of how much time did they spend in the gym? You know, how, were they eating the right nutrition? Did they have the best trainer that would have worked the best for them? Was it were they in top physical condition that day or maybe they would have had a cold or maybe in case of a woman, she was on her period and she's having cramps. And it's, it's kind of hindering her high performance in sports. You know, there's going to be variations and factors that we're not going to be able to control for. That doesn't mean that because we can't control for every single factor, we should then just throw out all factors and just not care about anything anymore. Just be like, well, in that case, let's just let anybody join the women's league. I mean, like, no, we control for the factors that we can to try to make it as fair as possible.
And within that, there are certain things that are without our control, which, you know, like that was it was just such a stupid, stupid, cheap argument from his side. And then like his defense of gender, like it was so. You know, I got I don't know how many women are watching this or not but i have to honestly tell you i think the biggest problem i have i already i already mentioned this before but one of the biggest problems i have with progressives in 2023 is i feel like in this day and age the more progressive somebody thinks they are the actually the more regressive and sexist and homophobic and racist their thinking actually is i mean like even this this um Mr. Tyson, he was on the show and he's trying to act like he's so progressive and he's like, yeah, just like the trans people in the sports, man. It used to be like in the civil rights. There used to be different water fountains. Now now everybody gets to use the same water fountain. Excuse me. Um, it's kind of like it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. I'm like, okay, that's absolutely not the same thing, first of all. Um, second of all, then when he gives an example, because they're kind of like, well... You know, I did a study. And I was like, a study. Like, I was like, this anecdotal study. You went on, he went on a New York Metro and one day challenged himself to only look at people in the face and from there be able to decide if they're male or female. Like, and then, I, oh my God. And then he actually, <laughs> he actually makes all these things where he constantly, like, at the very beginning of the video, because he's also very, very into the Corona thing. He was saying how, like, the people who tried to prove that masks didn't work, they didn't do the study correctly. That's not an official study. So we can't accept that study. And then he's kind of like, well, I went on a subway train in New York in winter and just looked at people's faces to see if I could ascertain whether or not they're male or female. This is a legitimate study. I'm like, that is not a study at all. That is just an observation you did because you happened to be bored on the subway one day. What an idiotic thing to say. Um... But anyway, then he kind of was like, and you know what? I almost always was able to guess the gender correctly. You know, because women, they wear makeup and they have long nails and long hair and they remove their facial hair and, you know, they like pink. And he was saying all these like such stereotypical and not in a positive way things about what it means to be a woman. And to me, like I'm saying, this is what I'm trying to say. Where I feel like these people, the more progressive they think they are, the more regressive and sexist their thinking is when it comes to this trans debate like it's always kind of like what like you ask these progressive people what is a woman well a woman is a somebody who is really feminine and has big boobs and long hair and likes to show off her hips and her curves and wear high heels and it like giggles a lot and smiles and i'm like if that is what you think if that is the first thing that comes to your mind in terms of what it means to identify as a woman identify as a woman as if it's not an actual thing and to like want your gender to be a woman by just embodying these really stereotypical traits of womanhood you are a sexist you are not progressive you are a sexist person you know it's the same way like i've talked so many times about like people on the, the progressive side who are constantly trying to say we're all the people on the right are racist and i'm like we're the ones that are racist you're the ones who are saying things like we shouldn't allow voter id we shouldn't we shouldn't make voter id compulsory because black people can't get ids what is more racist than to literally imply that black people are so stupid that they can't figure out how to make how to get an id card Black people are too stupid to get an ID card. It's racist for you to ask that. I'm like, no, actually what's racist is that you're implying that you think they're too dumb to do it. What is actually sexist is the fact that you are implying that all it takes to be a woman is to grow out your hair and put on some damn makeup. What is actually homophobic is that you're saying that gay people should be willing to sleep with somebody of the opposite sex just because they identify as that sex. Or even worse... Because a little boy decides one day that he wants to wear a dress to school that he obviously must be trans rather than just allow him to grow up to be a gay adult male. What's wrong with that? I, I, I am so... <sighs> Progressivism in 2023 is literally just bonkers. We are living in bizarro world. I, I, it, it, bizarro world. When you have... One of the most world-renowned astrophysicists, supposedly one of the high intellectuals of our time, not being able 
to define what a woman is other than basing it on the fact that she's a bimbo with long hair and big titties and likes to wear makeup. It, something has gone really wrong in our society and in our thinking. Like, I, I, you know, one of the comments, and then I, I, stole, I stole it from my Facebook page, but one of the comments somebody made um, was... They quoted, wait, I want to make sure I read it correctly, because I was like, oh my god, you're absolutely correct, this is where we are, and it fits so perfectly to this interview with Mr. Tyson, who supposedly was an intellectual. Somebody, like, this is a quote from George Orwell. Some ideas are so stupid that only intellectuals believe them. And after watching that interview of Mr. Tyson, I have to absolutely agree. I mean, like... <laughs> It's just, I, it actually hurts my head. It actually hurts my head this, watching this interview. And I was kind of like, like how, how can a person who is supposedly so intelligent be so dim-witted? So dim-witted, so disingenuous, and his demeanor was so off-putting. Like, I think you could tell that he's never gotten pushback on any of his opinions before. And now this first time when people are actually kind of pushed back on him, like he doesn't know how to handle it. He was just being so condescending and rude. I'm completely turned off by him at this point. Um, and it's just making me sad because I feel like this corona and the trans issue, I would say, are like the two biggest issues that are really tearing Western society apart right now. There's a couple of other ones, but these are two of the most major ones where it's really just tearing people apart. And I would say it comes down to, you know, people on the left who just think that constantly talking about feelings makes them good people and just constantly just acting as if they're some kind of social, moral, superior people makes them better. And then the people on the opposite side who actually have some intelligence and a brain lift that actually functions, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm just seeing myself losing so many idols. Idols or people I would have looked up to to some degree. And not just from the left. I talked about not too long ago how... I was really disappointed by Candace Owens because now she's, she's I think, taken a natural response. One of the things I talked about on my channel many times that I was worried about, that the left is going to push too hard and it's going to cause a lot of people to go very far right. And to me, I think she's now already gone really far right. And I feel like this these two topics have so polarized people and I'm having a really hard time holding on to any of my idols or people I've looked up to because people are naturally feeling like they have to choose a side and if they don't choose it themselves they're being pushed it's the same like with me like I've always thought of myself as pretty middle of the ground there's still things I agree on with the left like I will always be pro-choice my whole life I will be pro-choice to this day I'm pro-choice um but just because of the fact that I don't agree with the whole trans thing I'm already far right for most people right so, just, we need to get some more people, we need to get more people with just a tiny bit of integrity, a little bit of rationale, some pragmaticism, pragmaticism, people who can speak English properly, so clearly not me, <laughs> um, and like a good amount of just common sense and intellect to just kind of bring people back to the middle. Anyway, did you guys watch this interview? What did you think? How do you feel about Mr. Tyson at this point? Do you feel as disappointed by him as I do? Or not? Or maybe you agreed with him. Comments. Feedback. Good wishes for my lips that are hurting and blistering. And take care. Bye.